This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Welcome back to Miles Edgeworth Ace Attorney Investigations, everybody. Okay. We are, I believe, Recording. still on end part one of Turnabout oh Reminiscence. Oh my gosh. I, okay. I'm almost certain that's going to end this episode, though. Yeah, okay. That's good. Yeah, let's just okay. keep going, shall we? Okay. It's Detective Bad's last testimony. Oh, yeah. I was in lobby number one, talking with you. Hold it! You were not talking with me. No, like you. Y-E-W. Why did Miss Yu choose the lobby number one? Why did Miss Yu choose <laughs> lobby, lobby number, number one? one. Edgeworth had to think about it for a sec. <laughs> Answer me! Who knows? She just said that she had something she wanted to talk to me about. And we walked into lobby number one together. That's all. So his answer remains the same as before, I see. We were talking about some trivia. Uh huh. I was hoping you could expand on what exactly you were discussing with Miss Yu. Trivial stuff. It was nothing important. Five cyclops That's for me to decide. She was asking me what the best menu item at Taco Bell is. I told her they all <laughs> suck. <laughs> Ta Detective Bad would hate Taco Bell. Yeah, he's a man of class. And he's a man of class and eats Culver's. Yeah, <laughs> everyone knows Culver's has the best fast food, <laughs> except Chick-fil-A. Nobody, like 90% of people who probably watch your videos were like, what the heck is Culver's anyway? <laughs> they just can't. All right, I suppose that's for him to decide. Moving on then. Yeah, he has to decide whether or not Culver's the one. I heard the gunshot. Hold it. Cool. Until you heard the gunshot, did you notice anything else that was out of the ordinary? I didn't hear any other strange sounds until that gunshot. If the gunshot Detective Bad heard was really the one from the murder, that would give that other piece of evidence an entirely different meaning. I ask that you please amend your testimony with that statement just now. Every time we amend this testimony, that's always the statement we have to press. Generally? Sure. I didn't hear any other strange sounds until that gunshot. Hold it! Which lobby were they in? One. Was that the one that Detective Gumshoe was in? No, he was guarding he was number two. two. He was guarding two. Detective Bad, you honestly don't remember hearing anything else? Yeah. Is it possible you were so involved in your conversation that you missed something? I've been a detective for a long time, and even if I were involved in something, I've got quite the habit of keeping tabs on everything that goes on around me. If there had been some other strange sound, you can be sure I would have heard it. Hmm. Well, I suppose of this detective, that's probably very likely. Didn't... Didn't Kay shoot off a party popper? She popped her balloon. In... in the one? In Not the in one, one, in the hallway. Okay, then yeah. So the gunshot. When we heard it, you and I immediately dashed out into the hallway together. And why did the two of you dash out in the hallway straight away? Because we clearly heard the sound of a gunshot. And we knew it came from somewhere nearby. And how did you know that it was a gunshot? <laughs> in my line of work, you hear enough of them to know. I suppose it's only natural for a detective to know what a real gunshot sounds like. But given the circumstances, the only person I could think of whose life would have been in danger was Faraday. That's why I ran out into the hallway right away and headed for where he was. Man, it sounds like terrible outside right now. It always sounds like that in this room. Oh, it's it like gumshoe okay. goofing around in there, and then we all ran into lobby number two. Hold it. Detective Gumshoe was there in the hallway. Yeah. Why didn't you attest to that earlier? When I saw Gumshoe, it was after I heard the gunshot. Having seen him then didn't change the fact that he was still could have done the deed. Ah! Sounds exactly like what Detective Bad told us before, however... Is there something in particular we should be asking the detective about? There just might be. No one knew that the knife is actually the Yadagarasu's key. Reflecting on that, perhaps there are other things that we know now, but Detective Bad doesn't yet. Yes, that should be my angle of attack. Did so you, you hear any other strange sound? So you think I it's think it's the, the party popper or the balloon. There's no party popper. There isn't? No. Oh, then it might be the balloon then.
I think, I think it's this one. Objection! Yeah, good job. Okay, cool. Detective Bad, does this balloon fragment remind you of anything? It's the same color as the one Kay was holding. Oh, so you knew about that girl's balloon. Yeah, I was sitting with her up in the gallery. During the recess, just before we split up, I filed that balloon, or filled that balloon for her. Well, as you may have already surmised, this piece did indeed come from Kay's balloon. So, what about the balloon? I wonder if you might remember hearing this balloon pop at some point. What are you getting at? <laughs> this fragment was found in the hallway right in front of lobby number two. Furthermore, it was the sound of this balloon popping that the judge mistook as a gunshot. Oh, so the sound that the judge heard was not actually a gunshot, huh? On top of that, his honor said that he had heard the balloon pop about 20 minutes before the, the trial was to reconvene. Yes, which means that his honor heard the balloon pop in the hallway when you were in lobby number one, Detective Bad. And if you were in lobby number one at that time, you were close enough that you should have heard the balloon popping as well. So? Well, don't give me a so! We just proved that there is a flaw in your testimony! The crackling of the truth is louder than the sound of your sweet naivety cracking. And since you kids don't seem to know, let me fill you in on something. Did you ever stop to think why the doors and walls of this place seem so rugged? That's because they were designed to keep secrets from being leaked. What, what is that supposed to mean? The doors and walls are super thick. The window panes are double layered. To top it all off, even the curtains are made of a special sound absorbing material. Then you mean... The windows were open though. Since I was shut up inside lobby number one, there was no way I could have heard that sound. No! Gah! The windows were open, that's the contradiction. I knew that's what he was going to say. Th then that means the scruffy face's testimony is completely useless! If the rooms are soundproof, then of course he wouldn't have heard any sign of a struggle. No! That's also why it's only natural that I didn't hear the balloon popping. Now do you get it, kids? Miles, I thought we were supposed to be the ones finding the flaws in his logic. Not the other way around! The other way around? It's not possible to hear the sound of a balloon popping if one were in lobby number one. However, if we examine this situation in reverse, a person standing in the hallway should not have been able to hear the real gunshot either. And yet, Detective Gumshoe claims to have heard it while he was standing in the hallway. Detective Bad, if that is the case, how exactly did you hear the gunshot? What do you mean, how? It just did. <laughs> it would appear that you have yet to realize the contradiction in your own words. Oh, how so? If the rooms are as soundproof as you say they are, then how did the sound of the gunshot enter your ears? I see what you mean. I guess I'm more out of it from Faraday's murder than I had thought. Which means what exactly, Miles? In the end, what does it all boil down to? It boils down to this. There must be a reason as to how detectives Bad and Gumshoe heard a gunshot they theoretically couldn't have. It looks like we need to examine the state of the crime scene again, huh? The state of the crime scene? Wait, can it be? It's that ultra-strong perfume you wears. She spilled some of it. We have logic again! We have logic, finally. Wah! And way too noisy! The surveillance video. How could a piece of evidence just disappear? Where did it go? All of a sudden we got all of these. Holy crap. Logic so them together. Lobby number two window. No human can climb through these barred windows. The scent of flowers is in the air. And then there's the smell. Very loud television. Lobby number two's television. It looks like it was set to an incredibly high volume. Where did the surveillance for, uh, tape for Mr. Party's bag disappear off to? And the lobby number one window had the perfume. I think the the window and the window with the perfume. I think those two go together. Logic. It's simply not possible for the killer to have escaped through barred windows. And yet the fragrance of the perfume managed to escape from defendant lobby number one. Of course, incorporeal fiends can freely move through these open barred windows. Ooh. 
an incredibly high volume with the sound of the television? That's possible. Am I becoming logical? <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. Now then, what else besides a smell can go both in and out of an open barred window? The answer is sound! So no matter how careful the killer was, if the windows were open, the jig would be up. And since the windows in both Defendant Lobby Number 1 and the hallway were open, that explains how the sound of a gunshot could be heard in both locations. But we're in Defendant Lobby Number 2 right now, aren't we? Yeah, we're in the crime scene one. Yeah, the window's open. Yeah, they're open in both of them. Oh, so, yeah. Okay, I was right. The missing piece of evidence is a video that shows the moment in which Mr. Rell killed the Embassy staff member. The sound of the gunshot left quite an impression on me when it was played during the trial. The video should have been returned to Mr. Faraday's evidence bag for the recess, and brought back here. If it disappeared after that time, then it's possible that the tape is still here in this room. Eureka! The evidence that if the missing evidence created for me is the gunshot sound that no one should have been able to hear in the first place. Miles, what have you been thinking about? Stop wasting time thinking, and let's start looking again! It's not a waste of time to think, for I have figured out what, where should we should look. And where would that be? I believe we should examine the television. The TV. Well, you kids have fun. Go ahead and examine whatever you like. Begin investigation. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. I'm looking at everything. The window is wide open. The scent of flowers is being blown in from the outside. I think it softens the heavy air in here somewhat. Hmm. Windows in both lobby number one and two were open. Maybe they were trying to air out the room, just like in a lobby number one. Or maybe they sought out to ease some of the tension through some fresh air. With Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell in the same room, I imagine the latter to be the case. But was there really a need to open the window just for that? Earlier, when Detective Gumshoe touched this, it made the most terrible racket. You mean when Scruffy turned the television on, right? Actually, come to think of it, I don't think Detective Gumshoe actually touched the television at all. Furthermore, it seemed more like when a video feed suddenly stops. At least it did to me. I wonder why that is. It's a video player, and there seems to be a videotape inside. It looks like it. The tape must have stopped on its own when it reached the end. This tape? Could it not be the missing surveillance tape? I suppose, but... Detective Bad, would it be alright with you if I verified the contents of this video? Sure. Knock yourself out. That's it's how it's... Detective Bad gets killed. Or not killed, just arrested. And this... <laughs> and it's actually, it's like, it's not the surveillance tape, it's Pooh Party, the VHS. <laughs> Which always, we always seem to have to rewind. Alright then, let's rewind this and see what we have. Or the frozen VHS, which apparently was created. <laughs> that was created? Yeah. If I remember correctly, the footage of Rel killing the Embassy staff member should be at about the 30 minute mark from the start of the tape. How do you know this? Understood. This should be about right. Now then, let's see. TV? <sighs> this is. This is the footage of Mr. Rel shooting the Embassy staff member! Pringles Man. I knew it. The missing piece of evidence in the surveillance video was here all along. So Gumshoe turned up the volume really loud on the TV, it played the surveillance video and it went bang, and they're like, oh my gosh, we're gonna... Maybe not Gumshoe did it, but someone Some did. idiot. Maybe it was the forensic scientist who doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> this sound, what's the meaning of this? It appears that Detective Bat has figured out the true source of the gunshot he heard. With this, I think we can figure out the trick behind this double murder. Do you mean that you figured it all out then? Yes. All I have to do now is show what the gunshot detectives Bad and Gumshoe heard was, and through where they heard it from. <sighs> Fine. In that case, show me what you've deduced. Now to show what the gunshot detectives Bad and Gumshoe heard was, and through where they heard it from. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious nook and cranny. Deduce. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? Why, yes it is. The... Uh, Badge said that yeah. he heard it right before the trial. Eureka! This piece of evidence will clear away the last remaining contradiction of the case. Miles, 
I believe that piece may actually be proof of a different last of sorts. It proves that today will be your last day as a prosecutor! It appears that I've made a mistake. However, I know that the last riddle and its answer lies somewhere within this room. I need to calm down and think it through once more. I thought three, but I thought Did you need the oh. TV screen? Oh, come on. I hope not. I bet it'll be like, you need the TV screen. You're probably right. Eureka! No? Maybe it's, um, the wrong do I need, piece. Maybe, do I need gum maybe shoes? Need, I, maybe you need the gun. Eureka! Oh, maybe I do need the gun? Or no. I thought it Do might. I just need this? Eureka! No. Okay, but I know what to do. I just don't know how to do it, basically. That's fun. Eureka! No? Alright, fine. Let's start with the window, then. The window is... Eureka! What? This is annoying. What are I know we doing exactly, wrong? I know exactly what it is. Is it it's just the just... gun that we have to present? No, because the gun isn't actually related to it at all. Oh. I mean, I guess we can just try stuff till we get it right, but... Did you try Detective Bad's testimony on the Yeah. Let's try doing the notebook, maybe. Alright, I don't know. The surveillance video? Oh wait, do it. Is it surveillance video on the window? Yes. Oh, brother. If the door and the windows to the crime scene, namely this room that we're in, were closed, the killer could have used the gun and no one would have been the wiser. That's true. This courthouse does seem to be well designed for such a thing as it were. However, what happened in reality was, Detective Gumshoe, Detective Bat, and Miss Yu, all three of them heard the gunshot. Well, the windows in lobby number one, number two, and the hallway were open. So naturally, the people in those locations could hear it. Ah, but then why would the criminal open the window in the first place? To allow the gunshot to be heard, I suppose. Correct. That's the only logical conclusion we can draw from this. But why was that necessary in the first place? I want a real answer, Miles. I demand satisfaction! Very well. I believe that the killer wanted to manipulate our perception of a certain fact. What was it the killer wanted to manipulate our perception that of? That there was actually a but there was actually a gunshot, right? But there was a gunshot, because the guy died to a gun... Maybe when the crime took place. The killer wanted to fabricate the time of death to their precise wishes, and they used the gunshot in the surveillance video to do so. So that's why the tape was left running! You mean the gunshot I heard was from this video? Yes. Which means that the murders really occurred at an earlier time than we thought. It must have been during the recess, but before Detective Gumshoe was on guard duty. Someone who has no alibi for that time period. And planned this crime out in advance. That person is the real killer. Sick. Complete. Investigation man? Nope. Mr. Emperor! <laughs> Your voice is even weirder now. Yes, what is it? Uh, Miss Yu's asking for you. She's in the courtroom. She says she's identified the murderer, but that she wants to clarify something. It looks like Miss Yu is still investigating something. Understood. Please tell her that I will be right over. I'll come along. I want to hear what she has to say. It would appear that the time has come to uncover the truth. The time has come to go to sea. <laughs> and uh, uh, what time is it? It says we've been recording for 20 minutes. Oh, pfft. we're continuing then. At least for a little bit. Yeah. We'll get to hear what Miss Yu has to say. If we ever stop saving. Okay, we're good. September 10th, 6.15pm, District Court, Courtroom, 
Number three. Miss Yuza hanging out. She's identified the murderer, but she isn't with them. Apparently. Okay. Okay. What are you doing here? Oh, hello, mister. I'm still investigating. But the object you're looking for has already... Okay. Don't mind him. Please continue with your investigation. Okay, you got it. Detective Bad, haven't we already found what you were looking for? If it means I can keep her in the dark just a little longer, any little task will do. Oh, you're more sympathetic than I thought. <laughs> Goes to the prosecutor's bench. <laughs> Although, this is reversed from what we usually see. Yeah. I've been waiting for you, Edgeworth. I've also been waiting for the moment in which we can finally lay this case to rest. <laughs> the moment in which we can finally lay this case to rest? She's so weird, and she's not that funny, honestly, anymore. Wasn't that when we placed Detective Gumshoe under arrest? <laughs> I think we've more than solved this case already. <laughs> Don't you? We'll see. It all depends on whether or not your logic holds. Oh, I see we even have a viewer in the gallery. And why even Mr. Bat is here. A, a viewer in the gallery? I'm hardly just a bystander. I have a duty to see this case through to the end. Where'd the judge go? Is he dead? No, he can't be dead. This can't is a prequel. <laughs> no matter how it turns out. Oh, is that right? Anyway, I thought you might like to hear what I've slaved away to find out. I've taken statements on every single person's movements during the time when our suspect was in the hallway. I also confirm that there's no possible route of escape from lobby number two. Therefore, the killer must be, without a doubt, Detective Gumshoe. And that's all you have? Yeah, that's all there is to my conclusion in this case. Sorry, but I beg to differ. In a trial, there is always time for a rebuttal, and we are standing in a court of law. It'd be more than appropriate to follow the rules of the court in this case, don't you think? <laughs> Absolutely like a rookie to think such a thing! But alright, I'll play along and give you the proper testimony. If my logic is correct, then I've already won. All I have to do now is prove it by showing who the real killer is. Misuse argument. Everyone, sans the suspect. Has an alibi for when the gun went off. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I immediately thought of, too. <laughs> Furthermore, the areas around the crime scene have all been thoroughly investigated, right? I also confirmed that there's no possible escape route from lobby number two. Which leaves us with one unshakable conclusion. The detective Gumshoe's the killer. Plot twist, Gumshoe actually is the killer, but he gets off scot-free. <laughs> I would not- no, I would not be mad with that conclusion, actually, because it could give a good reason as to why Gumshoe's forever in, like, Edgeworth's debt and, like, forever working for him, where it's like, you are a criminal, but I will have you work for me so that you can, like, pay back the deeds. <laughs> It'd be interesting. Edgeworth, there's no way he'd forgive a double murderer. Right. In my brain, I'm thinking, yeah, okay. If it was just, like, he stole Swiss rolls, then, yeah, yeah like... <laughs> Now that you have your testimony, I expect a good rebuttal, Edgeworth. <laughs> but of course. There's no need to confront her logic head on right Meanwhile, now. Meanwhile, like, Franziska is just being blocked entirely by Edgeworth's <laughs> frame. She's like, I'm back here, you know. I should instead focus on drawing out any trump cards she has up her sleeve. She's so she weird. Argument. She just laughs all the time. I do like her earrings, though. How they're like. The, the scales yeah, of justice. Yeah, the scales of justice. Not half women's. Yeah. The suspect, but I thought that Detective Gumshoe's alibi has already been proven. <laughs> Are you joking, Edgeworth? I assure you this is no joke. Look, I know you've heard from the judge earlier. The detective was in the hallway from which Mr. Faraday's daughter ate a Swiss roll. Yes, that is correct. But see, that was 20 minutes before the real gunshot went off, gunshot went off right? And the problem is, there's no one else who can cooperate with what he did since the snacking. Hmm. I see she's done her research well. Which means that I should focus on drawing out whatever trump card well, she's Well, technically, me. people saw him because the judge was in the bathroom for a freakishly long time, watching Gumshoe. She's as like, he ooh, this thing. is interesting. Yeah, no. Well, I thought the window was on. No, it was above the urinal because I was like, what the heck? What? <laughs> 
Whether they have been thoroughly investigated or not is for me to decide. <laughs> the scorched eyebrows and lines on your forehead are back. Anyway, even if you believe it hadn't been, it hasn't been exhaustive. The crime scene, lobby number two, has no way out other than the hallway Detective Gumshoe was standing in. And because he claimed to be there, that makes him the only possible suspect. But isn't it also possible that someone escaped through the window and into the garden? <laughs> this is the first place everyone looked, silly. The police aren't a bunch of lazy bums. They've looked into every possibility, you know. Isn't that right, Mr. Babb? Yeah. There wasn't a scrap of evidence to suggest someone used one of the windows. There also weren't any footprints or anything well, in the courtyard garden. The perfume, though, was in the window, wasn't it? It was... The, she, she spilled it in the room and it was wafting out the window. I suppose they really did check everything that would be relevant to the case. I also confirmed there's no possible escape route. Are you absolutely positive that there are no possible routes of escape? Of course, I'm sure. And why are you so certain? This is a courthouse. The place where criminals are brought to be judged. If there was an escape route, I'm sure every criminal would have been using it to escape. It's just common sense. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, I suggest you use a bit more of it in the future. Grr! Which leaves us with one unshakable conclusion. <laughs> I squeeze my cheeks all the time. <laughs> You may think it's unshakable, but to me there are still too many unanswered questions. For example, who was it that placed the gun in Mr. Faraday's hand? <laughs> but you're the one no, you're the only one still wondering that. Detective Gumshoe probably had no idea which hand Mr. Faraday used to write with. Even if you know someone, it doesn't mean you know which hand they write with, right? I mean, I certainly don't know anything about any, that sort of thing. <laughs> Hmm. I'm not about to let her get a rise out of me with such a flippant statement. Hmm. I suppose we've really reached the end now. I already have my trump card ready. All that remains is to play it. But before I do, I think I should inquire and do a little something about her argument. You said earlier that you confirmed the alibis of every other person other than the suspect. However, I don't recall either Francisco or myself speaking with you about that subject. Ah, uh, but there were witnesses. For you, there's your mentor who gave you an alibi. I see. As for the little Missy... She was still driving on her lawn, John Deere lawnmower. To get there. <laughs> she came to the courthouse during the recess. On her John Deere lawnmower. <laughs> Stopped by a security guard on her John Deere lawnmower <laughs> at the door of the hallway. <laughs> she gave him quite a whipping for that, or so I heard. At least she didn't run him over. <laughs> <laughs> she could've. I'm the daughter of Manfred von Karma. And I will not be forcibly stopped by a guard, or a bailiff, or anyone else! Wait, so basically the only reason Francisca bothered to show up today was because she found out that I was to be the replacement prosecutor? By the way, Miss Yu, what about everyone's alibis before Detective Gumshoe was assigned to guard, guard duty? What about them? Have you looked into what people were doing during that span of time? What kind of idiot do you take me for? It doesn't matter when the killer went into lobby number two. From the time we heard the gunshot, to the time Mr. Bad and I arrived on the scene as we dashed from lobby number one, the only person who could have committed the crime was Detective Gumshoe. Yes, yeah, so let's talk about when you and Detective Bad heard that gunshot, shall we? I suppose that if we go by your logic, then Detective Gumshoe is the only one. However, what if the crime had occurred at an entirely different time than when did that gunshot you heard went off? What then? That gunshot was a trap meant to manipulate our perception of when- Sadly, your explanation is very lacking, Edgeworth. The gunshot we heard in lobby number one. Care to explain how that could have been fabricated? <laughs> if you're wrong, you'll be this much of your penalty. Be this much? <laughs> how about this much? <laughs> <laughs> no one can see your hands, but I'm guessing they'll- <laughs> It, we, we did that in Apollo where it's like the huge penalty. Like, you, you, Apollo, you're, you're wrong. wrong. It'll be this much, much of the penalty. <laughs> I just like the way it calls to it. Yeah. It was fabricated for this, of course. <laughs> it's a joke, I get it. Your deadpan delivery is great. 
Of course, if you're actually serious. Well, that's a less of laughing matter. Yeah. All right, so I was mistaken. What were you mistaken with then? The gunshot, they, I chose the key. Oh, that's I right. thought you picked the security tape. I'm like, what? Take that. That tape. Yes, it's exactly what you think it is. This is the surveillance tape of Mr. Rell the prosecution presented in today's trial. This was found loaded in the video player in lobby number two. That was connected to the large television that had its volume turned all the way up. There Goof. was no one in that lobby? Goofus turns the volume, volume way, way up. <laughs> you can't honestly mean that that sound we heard was the gunshot in the video. Ah, but I do. Which leads me to my next point. The murders occurred much earlier than when anyone heard the gunshot. That's the only thing I can think of, too. After committing double homicide, the killer took the surveillance video out from Mr. Faraday's evidence bag, turned the television's volume all the way up, and left the video to play. So Goofus is the killer, basically. Yeah, Goofus is gallant. If played from the beginning, it would take 30 minutes for the gunshot sound to come on. And since we now know that this method of time manipulation is possible, it opens up the possibility that the killer is someone other than Here's Detective the thing Gumshoe. That I don't understand with this. Let's say this is playing for 30 minutes. You're telling me that in a 30 minute time span, no one walked into lobby number two? No, because it was like far days like interrogating the guy in there, and you don't go in. He's not to be bothered. That's why Gumshoe was standing guard over the door so no one would go in. Oh, so no one could go in and no one could come out. Right. So it was playing. Okay, because I was like, you're telling me this is just in a random lobby and people are walking past like, oh man, look at that guy. He just got shot. Whoa. <laughs> the special effects are amazing. <laughs> so good. My favorite movie. Sounds from a television doesn't amount to much here. But of course, Mr. Prosecutor Edgeworth and little Miss Von Karma already knew that much from the very beginning, right? Of course we knew. Didn't we, Miles? Yes, of course. We know about the soundproof quality of this courthouse's rooms. Of course, I'm not about to admit we had no idea until only a little while ago. That's right. And if the rooms are soundproof, then we should not have been able to hear it. And yet we heard the gunshot clear as day. And? And? Th that's it! End of the story! <laughs> but it's not... How should I explain why she was able to hear a gunshot from the soundproof wood? The window. There was a hole in the wall. <laughs> there is actually one common point between lobby number one and lobby number two. Oh, should have picked hole in the wall. You should have picked hole in the wall. And it is that, despite the, and then, and it is that, despite the fact that both rooms have an air conditioner installed, a window is open in each. Now we know that the window in lobby number two was opened by the killer. However, a window in lobby number one was also opened. That was your fault. <laughs> it's possibly, it's probably just a coincidence they were both open at the same time. <laughs> I was no, it was no mere coincidence, <gasps> I assure you. I'm putting it together. Okay, I know exactly what happened. Okay, Manny Cochin goes in, interrogates the guy, shoots him. Double homicide. Wait, how did Manny Cochin get in? The police are following him everywhere he goes. I don't know, he's just... It's amazing. Anyway, so People's he's- People's blueberries. <laughs> what? Okay, no. Anyway, so he's the one that's in there. He, did he talk to her ahead of time? He talked to her after the killers were Darn discovered. Darn it, I thought, wait, after they were discovered? Oh, yeah. Because I thought like, the reason the window was open was because of her stupid perfume. So maybe it was like, spill your perfume. <laughs> oh my bad. Oh gosh. Okay, let's open this window. And then like the gunshot goes off. Why was the window opened in lobby number one? The answer to is that a certain person did something to cause the window to be opened. And the person who triggered that action, that person is the real guilty party. You sure about that? The real killer in the double murder is... Wait, it's her? That doesn't make any sense. All she did was spill perfume. That's a criminal offense. Per spilling perfume is not a criminal offense. If that's the case, this <laughs> can't girl- believe he's 24. This girl that I went to New York with is a criminal because she spilled perfume in the bathroom. It was terrible. <laughs> so it's what are you in for? I spilled perfume. Oh, oh get me out of here! Get me out. <laughs> this person is the real culprit behind the case. What sort of nonsense? Be serious here, Miles Edgeworth! Nah! That must not be the correct person. I actually thought it was Francisca. <laughs> that doesn't 
doesn't make any sense. Miss Callisto, you, I hereby formally indict you of the murder of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. What? This is coming out of nothing. What? Y you indict me? <laughs> she smeared her lipstick. You better watch out. Are you serious, Miles? What do you think? Sh Why do you think she's the killer? I don't understand her motive just yet. Yes, I do. But of course I'm serious. Because she is the only one who could have done it. Well, Miss Yu, do you still feel like laughing now? <laughs> of course I do, Edward. My argument must not be tight enough yet. Although I never thought things would spiral into this. But I'll have you know I'm enjoying this dance. Quite a bit. I guess this means it's time for my own rebuttal now, right? Miss Yu's rebuttal. You argue that the window was open. However, do you have proof I was the one who did that? Furthermore, do you have proof that the tape was used in committing the crime? Well, number one, even if you didn't open the window, um, you spilling it would cause the window to be open because you stink. <laughs> stink more than the feta cheese. <laughs> what if she had feta cheese perfume? Ew! <laughs> that would be so gross! <laughs> She's like, man, I love feta cheese. <laughs> <laughs> she actually just eats it all the time. She doesn't wear perfume. It's just like... <laughs> <laughs> doesn't brush her teeth? What? <laughs> I just don't want the taste of feta to ever leave my eye. I'm grossing myself out with this. Frankly, I'm shocked at you for suggesting that I would eat feta cheese. <laughs> 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 for going around accusing people of murder like this. Especially with logic as full of holes as yours. Full of holes or full of the holes of, of Swiss cheese? <laughs> you actually eat Swiss cheese. This is where it really starts. I mustn't let my guard down for even a second or the truth will blow away. Now's the time to put the patented Von Karma perfect proof to the test. Yeah! <laughs> well, we'll have to put the patented Von Karma perfect proof to the text next time. Who uh, are you? Miles Edgeworth. Ace Attorney Investigations. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. Next recording session, we'll probably finish the case. Yeah. You Are you surprised that it's you who's the killer? Or yes and no. I knew it would be someone who was new. So I thought it would be Manny. Why is Manny in this? He's literally just there for two seconds like, hey, hey. I'm a creepy guy, and then leave. Well, he played an important role in the first Kitty Gate incident. Oh, blah. maybe what happened is, is he like an assassin? Maybe she hired him. Maybe it's like another like Matt on guard to killer type thing where it's like, oh, I need someone to do my dirty work here. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to kill people, but like, she's the one who arranges it. Because this girl is a skinny. It would, have as, had, like, it would have to have been the other way around. Because again, Manny Cochin, the police are following him because they're like, we know he killed the CCU. But, but she like, spilled the perfume. <laughs> so how would she? No, she spilled the perfume. Wait, Afterwards, wait, okay, she spilled the perfume okay. when she was talking with him before oh, the gunshot. Okay, point. okay, okay. So she kills them, opens the window in two, in lobby number two. Then she walks back to lobby number one. She's like, "Oh my gosh, detective bad. How you? Oops. <laughs> what? what a klutz! Wow, that, doesn't that stink? Fat cheese. Oh, <laughs> why do I own this perfume? <laughs> detective bad opens the window, bang, and then they run. And they're like, "Oh my gosh, what? What terrible!" I don't know. Feta cheese is one of the <laughs> nastiest cheeses Fetid out there. Feta cheese perfume. Anyhow, look forward to next time. Until we meet again, my friends. Have a great day and God bless.